has a steady earning pattern, <coughs> and you look at a 12% compounding of the earnings and of the increases in dividends per year, let's say, if that happens, you're going to double your money every seven years. But you put characteristics, you say non-cyclical, that excludes, mm -hmm. you know, natural resources, it excludes... I don't only say non-cyclical. No, but you're very big on the word non-cyclical. If I put this through a computer, it keeps that, coming back. That is because of the fact that I'm appealing to an audience that is not capable of di distinguishing other groups as far as I can see. Because to distinguish the other groups, you have to know far more than you have to know if you invest in Exxon or Procter & Gamble. Because, they're, because it's just more, uh, if it's more reliable, if it's Procter & Gamble will always sell mouthwash. I mean, you, it's a little bit that Warren Buffett line, people will always buy the Dilly Bar. That's right. So he's or in the Dairy you, Queen if stock. If you buy uh, uh, Diageo, which is a liquor firm, well, the people will continue to drink liquor. And they will continue to drink beer, etc. In so, good and bad times. So if you have a management that can get you a 12% compounding, of the earnings and the dividends, you're going to double your money every seven years, which I think is a rational type of objective. And um, you, you also point out that uh, you don't like, uh, this is advice we've heard before from many people, going in and out all the time. You sit on it. If it's a good nest egg, you sit on it if it's well chosen. If it's you well you chosen, sell if it's badly chosen, but you're very precise. Well, I, I might uh, also sell it if it gets vastly overvalued. For instance, these type of stocks uh, before the OPEC uh, crisis in the early 70s sold at 70 times earnings, this kind of stock. That was, they were called the Nifty 50. Mm -hmm. Well, at those prices, they were ridiculous, and they fell to 9 and 10 times earnings in the crash which came afterwards. So you took a profit on something like that? Because you have an uh, uh, unrealistic valuation. But you also say anybody who got out of Coca-Cola during a temporary high regretted it if they didn't go right back in. That's probably true. But uh, it, there's a question of how high is high. And the idea is to buy cheap and sell dear. Mm -hmm. Well, you're never going to be able to buy cheap unless people are scared. That's the only time you're really going to buy cheap and you're never going to sell dear unless people are totally enthusiastic. So you want to, you call that your gentleman theory. That's do what, correct. Do what the other side wants. That's right. You have to be nice to people. It's a good Christian attitude. Sell when they want to well, buy and buy when, when they want to sell. somebody uh, wants to sell something, help them. And when he, but why do when people... When he wants to buy something, help them too. Why has the psychology never changed and there are still herds either going off the cliff in pessimism or going up the mountain in optimism. Why have people never learned that that's bad? Because the human being uses reason to justify emotion rather than emotion to justify reason. And that's part of human nature and it's always been that way and will always be that way. We're an animal like another animal. When I go fishing and I put a beautiful lure out, somebody's going to hit it down there. Even though we are talking about people's wealth and we're supposed to have very intelligent analysts and so on pouring over it, it's as primitive as that? Yes. I think that greed is, uh, is always there if you don't watch out and fear is always there unless you know how, with reason, know how to limit them. And most people don't do that. Most people pursue the pleasure principle. And you also say um, you generally recommend, you know, s sitting on it unless it's overvalued. If it's a good choice, like you say, for as long as possible, you avoid taxes, capital gains, and all that. But you look commissions for, too. Yeah, yeah, because you know we get into mutual funds later. You they're not not very kind to them, um, and you think they're not very kind to us. But uh, you look for dividends. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas a lot of people will say, no, the stocks that will appreciate the most over the years keep their money. You say, no, I want to see some of their money along the way. Why? Very simple. If you buy a company at the very beginning, when it, say you buy my company shares at the very beginning, and you never sell them, and eventually any corporation has a life just like a human